Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the almost weekly web series where we find, test, and sometimes create the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we are handling one of the most important videos I could possibly think to make. I'm so excited I can hardly contain myself. We are tackling Southern cornbread dressing. You heard that right. It's one of the recipes that I consider to be probably my holy grail of low carb eating. And if you're a Southerner, you probably will agree. I hope that I do not disappoint. Stay tuned. That is freaking gorgeous to me. I, I can't even stop to eating to talk. Okay, for those of you that don't know what cornbread dressing is, I firstly want to mourn for a moment for you because it is uh, one of the most delightful things I've ever put into my face. Um, for those of you that do know what cornbread dressing is or what we um, and my family would call chicken and dressing, then you know exactly of the luscious, unctuous, wonderful, bready, fabulous concoction that is chicken and dressing or cornbread dressing. And um, it uh, takes the place in the South of what you other people might know as stuffing. We don't put it inside of a bird, um, inside of the cavity of a turkey. We put it in a 9 by 13 casserole dish and bake it for about an hour, and it is one of the staples of most holiday tables. We eat it at my family for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. It's just a staple. So this is one of the things that I've been working very hard on, um, and if you'll refer back to the cornbread battle video, which you've seen it, I'll, I'll link it up here, um, then you know that that was one of the most requested things in the comment section was, can you please do cornbread dressing with one of these recipes? And while I tried that, I worked on that a good bit, um, none of those four recipes were really exactly what I was looking for. It didn't hold up to um, soaking up in a, in a big casserole pan with chicken broth and pan juices. So. I've reworked the cornbread recipe. I will tell you that this cornbread recipe is meant for this dressing. Yeah, you could probably eat it like cornbread, but some of the cornbread recipes in the cornbread battle video were better than as cornbread than this is uh, as is cornbread, but this is better for cornbread dressing. I hope that makes sense. Because cornbread dressing, you'd normally would um, crumble up a bunch of bread, uh, for those that don't know, and then you wet that down with a lot of chicken broth and chicken pieces and some vegetables and aromatics, and you gotta get it kind of soupy, and then that bakes for so long that it sort of congeals and all that flour, traditional flour and cornmeal, um, sort of absorbs that. We don't have that luxury today. So we've had to work around that, and we have. I think to some great success. So stay tuned, let's do this. Okay, now the gist of this recipe is basically broken down into four steps. It looks like a lot. If you see the written recipe, it's in the description below, so be sure to check it out. If you see it, it looks intimidating. It's not really at all. But here are the steps. You've gotta boil a chicken. I'm not gonna do that today because I anticipate that you already know how to boil a chicken. I put a five pound chicken in a pot of cool water, boiled it, and uh, for about 45 minutes, took it out, shredded that so that I have a combination of light and dark meat. Here's the one thing that I want you to do though. Take the chicken stock that you have reserved, put it back on the stove, put it on high and boil it down for about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. You don't want to reduce it too far, but you do want to reduce it enough to get some nice chickeny flavor. Because we can't use as much stock in this recipe as we'd normally do in uh, chicken and dressing, we've got to make sure the stock we do use is extremely flavorful. So you've got your chicken made, then you make the cornbread, which we're gonna do now. Then you prepare the aromatics. This normally your onions and your celery are sort of boiled on the stove or sauteed on the stove. And um, we're gonna show you how you would work with that. And then you assemble the dressing and bake it. And then it's that easy. So anyway, um, let's get started. So now we've got to make the cornbread. This is gonna be done in a large cast iron skillet. This is the best way to do it because part of the, and it needs to be, a, I think this is like a 10 inch skillet. It needs to be a fairly large skillet, but this gives the browned edges that I particularly like in the crispy brown edges in a, in a uh, chicken and dressing or a cornbread dressing. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can do it in another uh, baking pan, whatever you would make a cake in. Um, just know that you need to grease it well, and it's probably not gonna have that crust that this is gonna have. But to get this, the oven is on 425. We need to preheat this skillet, and we're gonna do so with uh, two tablespoons of bacon fat. And this is an important ingredient in this recipe. The bacon fat and the pork rinds, I know are odd ingredients for cornbread dressing or cornbread, either one, but they really add to the savoriness of this recipe. So in it goes, two tablespoons of bacon fat, throw this in the oven, let this get hot, ripping hot, okay? 
Okay, so let's start assembling this cornbread. What I've got here is two and a half cups of almond flour that I have sifted. We always say that, make sure you sift that. So what we're gonna do is add all of our dry ingredients on top of this. So you've got two and a half cups of almond flour. You've got a half a cup of ground pork rinds. Put this in a blender or a food processor. You can do it with a stick or a rolling pin. That usually works for breading, but this needs to be as fine as you can get it. So if you have a food processor, whiz it up in there. So this is a half a cup of pork rinds. This is also a half cup of whey protein isolate, whey protein powder, unflavored. Do not mistakenly get vanilla. I have done that and it will ruin your life if you're trying to make a savory recipe. So whey protein. And this is a quarter of a cup of oat fiber. Um, this is also an important ingredient in this. This uh, oat fiber is so absorbent, it really helps the final product taste more like bread and also helps it absorb some moisture. Same with those pork rinds. You don't realize that pork rinds are hygroscopic. They, you ever eaten a pork rind and you just get dry mouth? You know, it's because it's sucking all the water out that's gonna help us pull in the moisture from the broth into that dressing. So, all right, so this is oat fiber, quarter cup. That is so fine, it's like baby powder. All right, and to that, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of onion powder. So uh, put this in, that's Himalayan pink salt, which is why that salt looks pink, if you're wondering. And finally, two teaspoons of baking soda, not powder, baking soda, All right? And don't use the one that you've got stuck in the refrigerator for the last six months either. Baking soda absorbs odors so if you've got one in the refrigerator, it's been absorbing odor for the last three months, and then you're gonna go bake a cake out of that or make a cornbread out of it, and it's gonna taste like everything you take. The fridge just smelled like, oh, never mind. Don't even do that. So let's take our dry ingredients and just combine those before we add anything wet, okay? So combine this. All right, now let's get our wet stuff prepared. And this is, um, this is a cup and a quarter of heavy whipping cream plus a half a cup of water. To this, we need to add, um, you need to beat your eggs. The way I beat my eggs is, um, cause it needs to go be beaten before it goes in here. I, um, I crack my eggs into my uh, cream and milk mixture and sort of give that a whirl, you know? And then it all goes in together. So, see? That'll break these eggs up. If you um, use the Amaretti uh, corn, sweet corn flavor, it would go in this as well, just because there's so little of it and it's so pungent, you want to dilute it with this much larger portion. So into our dry ingredients goes the eggs, the heavy cream, the water, and the Amaretti if you're using it. And then also, we come in with three tablespoons of melted butter as well. Let's mix this up, but do not over mix it. It just needs a, a you know, combining, but you don't want to over beat it because you will make it tough. This is a thicker batter than you're probably accustomed to in um, traditional. All right, that's all I'm gonna do. So just leave that be. This is a thicker batter than traditional cornbread, so just be aware of that, you kinda want that. We're just gonna chill out for a second while our um, bacon fat continues to heat in the pan. I'll be right back here and show you what we're gonna do. The point is to get that bacon, that pan and the bacon fat ripping hot so that when you pour the batter in there, it sizzles and fries a little bit to get that bottom crust and then we throw it in the oven, it's gonna be in there for at least a half an hour. Okay, so we've got a hot skillet here. Woo, that is hot. And oven's on 425, this has been in there a while. In goes our batter. Oh yeah. All right. Into the oven, 425. Start checking it at 20 minutes. Mine takes about 30, maybe 35. Meet you back here. Okay, we're back and I just have to show you this. I mean, look how gorgeous that is. This is going the back burner, it's gonna cool off and we're gonna handle the aromatics now. Okay, so this is where my secret and my trick for flavor comes from. Uh, normally in dressing, you've got a lot of celery and a lot of onion, and those aromatics are what create a bunch of flavor, but obviously onions are really carby. So we're gonna cut these way down, so we've gotta work hard to extract all the flavor we can out of these guys. 
um, for this large pan of dressing. So what we're going to do is uh, in a little pat of butter, we need to saute these for probably on medium heat, maybe five to seven minutes. You want to get them soft and translucent, but you do not want to brown them. You can get a little color on them, but you're not going for caramelized onions here. That, that creates way too much sweetness and sugar that you don't want in the flavor um, of dressing. So what we're going to do is just saute, saute these for five to seven minutes until they're soft, okay? Okay. Now we're get, starting to get a little bit of color on the bottom of this pan. You see here, it's getting a little bit brown. So this is what we're gonna do. This is still way too crunchy for, for dressing. Even though it's gonna cook an hour, you do not want to, or at least I don't, want to bite into a um, crisp onion or celery. It needs to be very soggy. In traditional dressing, when I made it with my family, we would boil this down in some of the reserved chicken stock uh, and, and then, because you needed so much of it, you know, because the bread would, could absorb it. We don't have that luxury. So what we're gonna do, here is our reserved stock, okay? It's a big, you know, I don't guess it's about two quarts. I'm just gonna stir this up so because you want that fat to be evenly distributed. And cup by cup, we're gonna add this to, try not to make a mess here. Okay, so this is a cup of, of the stock. Now watch this, we're gonna pour it in the skillet. Now, turn this to high, well, medium high. And you're just going to let this boil down and keep it moving, but this is going to keep it from browning. It's also going to tenderize these uh, celery and onion, but more importantly, we're going to do this about three times. We're going to let this cook all the way until there's very little liquid left. When there's very little liquid, we're going to put another cup in. Again, let it cook down. When it again gets to just a very little bit of liquid, do it a third time. And what this is going to do uh, is allow us to concentrate about three cups worth of broth, uh, the flavor that is in three cups of broth, into what will amount to literally a quarter of a cup of liquid and a lot of these uh, soft, then soft caramelized vegetables. So that's what, uh, uh, that's my trick. This is um, how I'm getting a lot of flavor into this because I can't use a lot of stock in the recipe. So this is one way to get some good chicken flavor in there. Okay, so we've um, taken care of the aromatics, and as you can see here, there's not a lot of liquid. That's uh, three cups of chicken broth that have been cooked down slowly. It takes about 15 minutes to do it, uh, if not longer. Um, so uh, that's what we're looking for right there. There is so much flavor in that from the chicken and the aromatics that this is going to be the magic bullet in making this low-carb dressing work. So with that said, as you can see, Let's make some dressing. All right, so what we're gonna do here is just assemble everything that we've already done. Firstly, let's go ahead and butter our um, nine by 13 casserole. It's just a glass casserole dish and it's gotta be well buttered. So I'm gonna do that quickly now, okay? Okay, this has been buttered. Be generous, use more than you think you need because uh, the worst thing, especially in the corners and the sides, because the worst thing you want is for all this work and all this money and all these ingredients to go down the drain because you can't get it out the pan. All right, so hold on, let me wash my hands. Okay, so from here, we just need to break up this beautiful uh, cornbread. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, look at here. We'll break. Looks good, doesn't it? This crust on the bottom, this brown, dark brown crust, you see how it's a sec separate layer? That makes a good cornbread to me. That's what I love to eat. It makes a good dressing. So, all right, let's break this up into small pieces. You need a large bowl. If you don't have a bowl large enough to do this in, try it in a big old soup pot or something like that because you need to have plenty of room for mixing. So, let's just break it up. So now let's start assembling the dressing. From here, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so we've got our crumble cornbread. You see how much this is. That is a, that is a huge bowl. So um, again, if you don't have a bowl this big, use a stock pot or something that you can get vigorous with. So to our cornbread, we're gonna add two cups of shredded uh, chicken. 
and you're going to have a ton of chicken left over if you boil a whole carcass, um, which is the best way to get the most flavorful broth. So boil a whole chicken and just know that you're going to have a lot left over for chicken salad or whatever you may want to do with it. So add two cups of shredded chicken to the mixture and then add your sauteed vegetables and aromatics. This is where a lot of the flavor is coming from, guys, right here. So take your time with that one and know that that's why we're doing it. Okay, now here is my other trick that keeps this dressing together. Before we add our broth to this, we're going to do one thing. I need an egg, raw, liquid, to be poured over the top of this. And if I were to just beat an egg and throw it into this, whatever it landed on would just soak it up immediately and it wouldn't get dispersed through. So what we're going to do is crack an egg into our measuring cup or whatever we used for the broth. And then we're going to add the cooled broth, about a cup, to that egg, okay? Almost a cup. And then beat that so that the egg is fully incorporated into this broth. Now, this is not hot broth. You know, we've been working on this for a little while, so that broth is cool. If you pour hot broth over this, you're going to have egg drop soup. That is not what I want. So, now we are not, we're going to reserve this. That's an egg in, the, in a cup of the broth. We're not going to pour this in yet. That goes after we put it in the, but we needed to reserve the broth. So we're going to set that aside and wait for later. So from here, we're going to start adding broth and stirring and mixing this all together. Now this is also, <laughs> I'm just going to say, um, this is where you would add sage. Um, and I am one of the weird people that does not like sage in my chicken and dressing or cornbread dressing. And I know, I know, I know. Um, my mother didn't like it. My grandmother didn't like it growing up. So we just never had it in our family's um, chicken and dressing. And as you know, this is a, a, a serious family recipe. And you know, you have dressing other places and you're like, well, that's not as good as my mama's or whatever. It's just like an Italian American saying, oh, well, that tomato sauce isn't as good as my grandmother's. You know, we all have those little tricks. My family just never used sage. So here's where you would add the sage. It's an optional amount of sage. You would add that to this. Uh, and I know most people would. I just prefer not to. So then let's add some broth and start stirring. Now remember that you are not making traditional cornbread dressing here. This cornbread cannot keep up with much liquid. So do not overdo it. Take a big old cafeteria sized spoon or something that you can get in with and just start mixing. You don't want to knock it around too hard because um, this has got to stay a little bit, you know, you want the bread to not just turn to complete mush and just keep going as you need to. This is where you taste it. Before you add that egg in, now is your last minute to put salt and pepper in it um, because we boil down all these um, stocks so it's hard to determine a salt level and you don't want to oversalt this. And it does need salt and pepper. Perfect. So, so this is where our little trick comes in with our beaten egg, one beaten egg and some chilled broth. Pour this evenly over the top and let it sink down into the dressing. And then from here, Y'all, look at that. <laughs> that is freaking gorgeous to me. Oh, it's so beautiful. Okay, so here we go. We cover it with foil. The oven has been preheated to 400 degrees. It was 425, remember, for the cornbread, so knock it down to 400. Cover this with foil tightly. That helps it cook. Seal the little edges here. So, this goes into a 400 degree oven. Uh, for 30 minutes covered. At 30 minutes, take the carefully take the um, uh, foil off and cook it for another 30 minutes for a total of an hour at 400 degrees in a 9 by 13 pan. So I will see you here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
We're back. Y'all, you're not going to believe this. Look, honestly, that makes my heart flutter <laughs> a little bit. It absolutely does. Um, it is beautiful. Um, my family would have added, to be honest with you, we would have added boiled eggs to this. Um, it's just like hard boiled eggs, chopped or sliced. We would have added that in the final mix before we baked it. Um, if you're in the coastal south, uh, along the Gulf Coast or over on the eastern coast, eastern seaboard of the south, you might add oysters to it. It might be oyster dressing. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to make this yours. Like I said, every family has their own special dressing recipe. But I hope this is a base that we all can use to at least um, agree on the basics of it. And then you can add what you like to make yours special, including sage. <laughs> Wink, wink. Yes, I know dressing needs sage. Don't get on to me. So let's taste this, all right? Um, I'm gonna come in here, uh, see? That is beautiful. This has rested for at least 15 minutes. This has been 15 minutes. It needs at least 15 minutes coming out of the oven. It's not about the temperature. It's the fact that it sort of congeals and, and becomes more solid instead of less crumbly as it sits. So give it a few minutes to do its thing. Uh, wow, y'all. It kind of holds together pretty well. Look at that. Look at that. First of all, holy macaroni. That is gorgeous, guys. Here's the magic. Let's see what it does. It's hot. It's good. It's very good. Um, you know, I said the, the, um, you can vary the amount of broth. I probably should have put a half a cup less broth, but this is the argument that every Southern grandmother and aunt and grandma and sister and daughter have had for the last 75 years is you didn't put enough broth in the dressing or your breath in the dressing needs a little more broth. <laughs> That's just what you talk about. Mm, her dressing was good or it needed a little broth. Or if you have too much sage, whatever it is. Damn, that is good. Y'all. I could not be more pleased. I, I can't even stop to eating to talk. <sighs> there you have it. Southern chicken and dressing, cornbread dressing, oyster dressing, sausage dressing, however you want to make it. But that's the base. Start there. Tell me what you think. Let me know in the comments below. This is going to come out in a, in a couple of days, so that's going to be around Thanksgiving. So I want to know if you're going to put this on your Thanksgiving table and what you think about it. Do not let the long ingredient list scare you off. It's really not that much. There are some unusual things there with the whey protein and the pork rinds. But trust me, just try it. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. This is my gift to you and your dinner table. Um, thank you for joining me on these videos. These videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating. And having to stare into the end of this camera every week helps keep me honest. Uh, so I really appreciate you that you've come along for the journey. Like this video if you are gonna try this. Um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, hit the bell button down below. That'll let you know as soon as I release a new video. Um, also, you can find my Patreon link down below. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. It's just, think of it as the tip jar for the internet. Um, it's a way for people like you to reward creators like me for the things we do by just giving us a dollar or two as a way of a tip and say thank you. Otherwise, um, join us here next week. We do this all the time. If you're new to this channel, you may have found me through the cornbread dressing. Um, join us. It's basically a half hour cooking show every week where we talk about low carb and keto cooking. And we do a lot of battles and pit uh, uh, recipes against one another and find the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. I'll see you next time. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>